The Rock. You know, recently, um, for some reason, I've started looking into um, this thing of professional wrestling and the ties thereof with Freemasonry and um, whatnot. And I came upon this. This is from some Freemason thing here. I, I can't even see it. But uh, I, just, I just want to share, you, share with you this little thing that I came across today. This is just absolutely revolting. Um, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along uh, in the scriptures, uh, what we're going to be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, at the, some of the scriptures we are going to be looking at. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Right away, though, Titus, chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 16. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Now, you got to remember that there's something about the Masons. The Masons are operated, controlled, and run by the Jesuit order. Okay? It is not vice versa. Okay? The Masons do not control the Jesuits or run the Jesuits. No, it's the other way around. Okay? Yes, at one time in history, the Masons and Jesuits feuded with each other. Yes, that is true. But the Jesuit order has overrun, overtaken, and control the Freemasons. Manly Palmer Hall gives credence to that. Brother Alberto Rivera gives credence to that. Even Eric John Phelps testifies to that. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, Hughes gives testimony to that. Okay. The Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuit order. And just like the Jesuits, the Freemasons are a bunch of whores. They bow at every altar. Okay? Benjamin Franklin, the epitome of the Freemasons, was a whore. Okay? He went to every church building. He bowed at everything. Okay? And Benjamin Franklin is in hell. All right? The Freemasons are vile. The Freemasons are vile, disgusting Luciferians. And the higher you get up in the rankings of the Freemasons, the sooner you will learn that whom you are worshiping is the light, uh, the light bearer, right? Right? The son of the morning, Lucifer. Okay? All right? Like I said, Manly Palmer Hall has has a lot of information on the Freemasons, if you want to know. Uh, but the, the Rock. I'm gonna, we're going to... We're, we're, let this speak for itself. I can, can't really see this. The link will be in the description box if you... Now, a lot of what this guy is going to say sounds good. But you got to remember, Freemasons are Luciferians. By the time you get up into the uh, 30th degree at the least, you know, they know that they are worshiping Satan. Okay? And 33rd degree, which is, to my knowledge, the highest degree that one can go, uh, yeah, you're worshiping Satan. You're worshiping Satan. Okay? Freemasons are vile, disgusting Satanists, okay? Controlled and operated by the Jesuit order, okay? The Black Pope, uh, during the time of Brother Alberto Rivera, the Black Pope himself was a Freemason. And see, these people who want to take away attention from the Vatican will do the very subtle, smooth twist and say, well, it's the Masons that run um, the Jesuits. No, 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 no. But 
want to read this to you, okay? Might get a little irritated during this, so prepare yourself, okay? Now, I can't really see this that well, so Dwayne Johnson. <coughs> He'd pummel me in a, in a heartbeat. He sure would. Yeah, and uh, part of his roid rage. It's interesting that that scoundrel devil scumbag Joe Rogan accused the, uh, this guy, uh, Dwayne Johnson, of steroid abuse, but yet uh, Joe Rogan himself takes steroids. Pot calling the kettle black, and that's something. But anyway, Dwayne Johnson, a professional wrestler and movie star, is a well-known actor because of the heroic characters he portrays. He's admired for these characters because they represent a man of moral character and high integrity, always fighting for the right thing and defending the downtrodden and weaker in society. I personally enjoy his movies, and I can fully understand why so many still call him by his wrestling name, The Rock. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. It's a great moniker or nickname for one who sets this sort of example in society. <laughs> now here's what's really going to get here. This I'm really it's like this. You scoundrel. And, and here's this guy who wrote this. Xerxes Harrington, R.W. Grand Orator. Freemason, okay? Freemasons. With their little perverse sex symbol with the G in the middle that stands for generative principle or generativity. Okay, it doesn't stand for God. Okay? The Freemasons are a sex pervert a perverted sex cult. Okay? They're wicked. They're filth. Alright? But let's okay. <laughs> Let, let's uh, let's read a little bit more of this. For a greater description, let us look to two of the great books of law, the Christian Bible and the Jewish Torah, for a definition of the rock. Now see what he did? The Christian Bible and the Jewish Torah. These are the scriptures, Jack. Okay? There is an Old and New Testament. Yes, they are. Yes, there is. But... It's one book. It's one book. Okay? The scriptures. Okay? Which encompass both the Old and New Testaments. Okay? All right? This is a Jewish book. This is. It is a Jewish book. Okay? Yes, it is. All right? It is, uh, the majority of it is written to the Hebraic Jewish people, the Hebrews taken out of Shem. What is written to us specifically today is found for us in the Pauline epistles. You got to you got to remember that, brethren. Okay, what is written for us Gentiles who are not of the Hebraic people, the Hebraic people taken out of Shem, what is written for us today doctrinally is found within the Pauline epistles. The rest of such is doctrinally written onto who? The Hebraic Jewish people. You have to remember that. Okay? But, okay, that's that's one little sly thing. Okay? This is the authorized version is the completed canon of Scripture containing both the Old and the New Testaments. Okay? All right? But it is the completed canon of Scripture. All right? But check this out. All right? And, and this, this guy. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And of course, he's not quoting from the authorized version of the scriptures. So, we see that. Let's go to that. 
Okay, Psalm 18. Okay, what does the scriptures say? All right. Verses 1. Oh, let's read. On to um, verse 3. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock and whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. Wow, that reads kind of different, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what version that's from. I don't know. I don't care. But the scripture says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Okay? And First Samuel 2 uh, chapter 2, verse 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. Besides you. There is no rock like our God. Okay, so let's see how whatever this devil is doing here. Let's see how he messes this one up. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Ugh. Freemasons. Drive me nuts. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2, huh? Well, let's read on to, oh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> let's read uh, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Hmm. There is, neither is there any rock like our God. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Hmm. <laughs> a little context. Oh, a little context goes a great way, doesn't it? Okay? <laughs> uh, see, this is what Freemasons do. This is what Freemasons do. They want people to believe, well, we, you know. There are King James versions out there that are Masonic bent. Okay? There are. Um, His Holiness from Maine even had a, a video where he had a Masonic authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? I vividly remember that. Okay? But see, that's what they do. But see, Masons are like chameleons. I mean, similar to the Jesuits, because the Jesuits operate and control the Freemasons, okay? You find Freemasons in uh, Saudi Arabia, the Freemasons are going to be lifting up the Quran or whatever, okay? They're whores. They're whores, all right? But Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, okay? This, this, this. This is revolting, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32, what does he say? Verse 4, okay. All right, let's read in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 1 on the verse 6. A little context goes a long way. What does it say here? He is the rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. Is that all there is to Deuteronomy 32, verse 4? Let's find out. Let's find out. <laughs> now, look at that. Okay, now, are you following along in the scriptures? You better be. Okay, look what's written there. 
He is the rock. His works are perfect. All his ways are just. Now, most of you would be like, wait a minute, there's more to that verse than that. Yeah. Verse 1 on to verse 6. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the capital R rock. His works are perfect. Okay? There's, uh, what does it say? He is the rock. His works are perfect. And this says, and all his ways are just. He is the rock. His ways are perfect. For all his ways are judgment. Hmm. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth. And without iniquity. Just and right is he. I don't know from where this scoundrel uh, is quoting uh, what version, but that, that, <laughs> yeah. See the level of deception there, brethren? They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. Get a load of this. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath be, that bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Okay. Got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is for the Jewish Hebraic people. Yes, under the law. Yes, it is. But this this guy that, that cut out a majority of the verse. Okay. And while we are in Deuteronomy chapter 32, let's go skip a little. To verses 15 on to verse, oh, let's read on to verse 18. But Jeshurun, Jeshurun means highly favored, waxed, ke waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick. And I'm not a light man by any. Uh, so, uh, you know, weight-wise myself, it looks like a well-fed boy there. Yeah. But just run, wax fat, and kick. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They, Masons, they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Yeah, because Masons worship Satan. Okay? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. That's what Masons do. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. See, Freemasons are comprised of men. Man. Okay? God made all men. Yes, he did. And all men are going to give an account of themselves unto God, whether at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne. Okay? Those of us who are saved, born again, converted of, this, uh, of the church of the living God, we are the ones that are going to uh, give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? After the judgment seat of Christ, after we get redeemed, we get caught up. Those, you know, from the time of Jacob's trouble and onward, it's the great white throne of judgment. Okay? The judgment seat of Christ is for those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? That's for us. After that, it's the great white throne of judgment, okay? You can read the book of Revelation. that will show you that itself, okay? But God has made all men, all right? God has made all men. Masons worship Satan. 
and you get into the 30s of Freemasonry, they know that they're worshiping Satan. Man, like I said, Manly Palmer Hall, you read some of his stuff, he will verify all of that, okay? And I'm more we're still here in Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's read verses 29 on to verse, oh, let's see, 33. Yeah. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? <laughs> For their lowercase r rock is not as our uppercase r rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Mm, isn't that something, huh? For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. And historically, the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, uh, when you uh, apparently with the something to do with the Templars, involved sodomy. Sodomy. So these 33rd degree Freemasons, like Trump, could it have been possible to attain to the 33rd degree that he had to engage in some kind of sodomite act? Mm. Mm. Look up the, uh, the rights of the Knights Templar, okay? Look that up on your own time, all right? How they had to spit on the cross or something like that and then engage in sodomite acts, okay? Yeah. For their rock is not, uh, for their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of Gaul. Their clusters are bitter. <laughs> Their wine is the poison of dragons, that old serpent, the dragon, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, Lucifer, Satan, and the cruel venom of asps. Hmm. And of course, what was it, Cyclone B, which they used in the gas chambers, as I understand it, was the equivalent or something uh, was derived from the venom, venom of asps. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Like I said, a little context goes a long way. Oh, and what else? One more. Isaiah 51. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from, from which you were cut out and to the quarry from which you were hewn. And of course, these scoundrels are going to use that. Because you got to remember, the Freemason is all about works. They're preparing their temple. Okay, they're all about temple builders. They're building, their life is the temple that they are building to impress their God, Satan. Okay? But Isaiah 51, all right? Again, a little context goes a long way. All right? Now, Isaiah, what is that? Isaiah 51, 1, okay? <laughs> Hearken to me. And we're going to read on to verse 3. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Hmm. Hmm. 
Interesting, huh? Let's let's keep reading a little to um, verse six. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for light of the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Look at that verse right there. Mine arms shall judge the people. Know ye not, brethren, that we shall judge angels? Okay? The isle shall wait upon me, and on mine arm, singular, shall they trust. The arm of the Lord, the right hand of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Like I said, a little context goes a long way. Now let's keep reading this um, good godly Mason stuff that he wrote here. Now that we have established what it means to be the rock, the rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, Xerxes, the Lord rebuke you, you foul devil. The Lord rebuke you. You can go to hell. And hey, since you've gotten to that position, you know that you're worshiping Satan, so you go right along to hell. Now see, a guy like this, when you, like I told you, when a Freemason reaches that level, they know that they are worshiping Satan. Okay? On this channel, there's that one Freemason guy um, that was where he talked about Freemasonry, uh, which was a very interesting uh, thing, and uh, that that guy was that guy's not saved. Okay, he said that he got out of Freemasonry. <clears throat> he's he's still not saved. He's still not saved. Okay, if I remember, I'll put that in the description box for you. But this guy here, he knows that he's worshiping Satan. You can go to hell, Mr. Xerxes Harrington. The Lord rebuke you. You can go to hell. You can go to hell. All right? So, let's continue. <laughs> now that we have established what it means to be the rock, let us examine ourselves as Masons in that capital L light. The Lord rebuke you, you foul scumbag. When they say light, what are they referring to? When the Masons talk about this light, what are they referring to? What are they referring to? Well, let's let's answer that, shall we? Let's answer that. Okay? The the Freemasons aren't my thing, okay? But this 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 came to like I said, uh, for some reason I'm looking into the um, the ties in pro wrestling with Freemasonry. Why? I don't know. It's just something that has gravitated. I've been like, what's what's with this, okay? But never mind about that. That More on that might come later. But what, what does this have to do with? I'm talking about light, okay? That's a capital L light. Capital L light does appear four times in Scripture. We're going to look at it, Okay? Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. Okay, when these guys say, like, he's, he's got, that's a capital L light. No, no, no. No, no, no. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? S O N. Lucifer means son of the morning. That's what Lucifer means, son of the morning. And hold your place here, and we go to 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Of course, we have to go to this when talking about these devils, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 
verses 13 on to verse 15. <laughs> this is no brainer here. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Back to first, Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And of course, like any other thing that is false, any other, uh, any other gospel, any other Christ, it's all works. Okay? But verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Back to Isaiah 14. Verse 12 again, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. The destination of every Freemason. Hell. Okay? Oh, and like I said, go now to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Okay? I didn't need to see this. But apparently I did. Hmm. John, chapter 1. Okay? <laughs> John, chapter 1. Uh, let's see. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 9. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. Seven times, capital W Word appears in the authorized version of the Scriptures. Seven times. In a Bible, it appears six times because the Bibles like to remove the Johannian comma, as they call it. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, which talks about the Godhead, not the Trinity. Okay? But seven times, capital W word appears. Seven times. Okay? All in context with John. Because here in the uh, Gospel of John, 1 John, chapter, uh, 1 John, and in the book of Revelation. Okay? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. Uh, all things were made by Him, and without Him, sorry, was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now pay attention. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the capital L light that all men that all men through him might believe. He was not that capital L light, but was sent to bear witness of that capital L light. That was the true capital L light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Mm. And who is this referring to? Capital L Light. It's referring to who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? So you see there, as Masons in that capital L Light, when they put that, number one, that's blasphemy. Capital L light in scripture refers unto our Lord Jesus Christ. They have twisted that. They are applying that to Satan. Okay? The Lord rebuke you, Xerxes Harrington, and all you Freemasons.
you threaten me again, I'm going to expose you publicly. You know who you are. You threaten me again. I'm going to put your email up on here. I'm going to expose you. And I'm going to tell everybody who I think you are. And I'm going to dig up the dirt that I have on you. Okay? As Masons, we are not supposed to be the average of our community. We are the ones with which others aspire to be like no pride there huh no pride there see god our father our lord jesus christ is the god of the little guy okay you read in the book of deuteronomy i didn't put my love upon you because you were the greatest but because you were the fewest okay that's why god is the god of the little guy okay you read about that in what uh hold, hold on uh, you read about that in what? Deuteronomy chapter 4, right? Right, brother? Right, Deuteronomy chapter 4 where he says, I, I didn't set my love upon you because uh, uh, because you were the greatest, but because you were the fewest or something like that. Um, uh, where, wherever that is, I can't, I can't find that right now. But a, little, a better verse for us for today, go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? All right. Uh, someone in the description box, please put that in the comment section. Please put that in the uh, uh, where it says in Deuteronomy where um, I didn't put my love upon you because you were the greatest. Please put that in the comment section for for the body of Christ. Please. Thank you. OK. First Corinthians chapter one. OK. He says right here as Masons, we are not supposed to be the average of our community. We are the ones with which others aspire to be like. So, they're supposed to be the superstars, like Dwayne Johnson. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <laughs> oh, verses 26 on verse 31. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many, not many, Wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Scripture said, doesn't say that these people won't be called, but it says not many. Why is that? Because those that are wise after the flesh, those that are mighty, those that are noble, have a lot more of stumbling blocks than us po average, below average of the... <laughs> Snobbery, like you see with these char these charlatan Christians here on YouTube. God's a God of the little guy. Let's continue. Calm down, Brad. Okay. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many mighty men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Oh, you, know, you mean like average people? Huh? God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. So what this devil, of course, because he works for Satan, is saying is contrary to Scripture. Okay? Well, well, well what about Paul? Yes, well, yes. Paul was very well known. Yes, Paul did above average things. But what did he say of himself? That he was a sinner who was chief. That, and, and, and hold your place here. And what does it say in 2 Corinthians chapter 1? Okay. What does it say in 2 Corinthians chapter 1? Oh, this, 
This this irritates me more than more so than anything. Okay. In Second Corinthians chapter one, okay, verses eight, on to verse ten. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we have the sent, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28. Let's read verse 27 again. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord. And that is a reference unto Jeremiah chapter, what was that? Uh, chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Let's go there. Okay. Ch uh, Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Irritates me. Irritates me. And uh, have you talked to uh, openly professed Masons? Huh? Have you ever done that? Very arrogant people. Okay. Uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 under verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Let's continue. As Masons, we are not supposed we are not supposed to be the average of our community. We are the ones with which others aspire to be like. We do not follow the fads of society. We set the standards for society to follow. And sure, that they sure have, haven't they? Yeah. How with all their things in uh, media and this, this pro wrestling stuff that I started looking into, uh, how they have, uh, with all the symbolism and stuff like that. Yeah, and with Disney and with the, the feminazi TV shows. That teach women that men are inadequate, inept, without a masculine woman to guide them along the way. Yeah. 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 Our standards have not faltered, nor have they been dismissed. What we presently have is a gradual erosion within our fraternity because some of our order feel the pressure of society demanding we change to accept lower standards. With the lowering of standards, we lessen our importance as leaders and models in our communities and in our families. Wow. 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 What does that mean? He's openly, openly already saying what we already know of how the Jesuit order is using the Freemasons in all their symbolism and all their magic with a K to influence. Okay. You got to remember. Freemasons are soldiers of the Vatican. Freemasons are controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay? you got to remember that. Don't believe these, uh, these uh, what was it? Um, uh, I, I forget some of these channels' names. Uh, a Call for Uprising. And all these other guys who concentrate solely on the Freemasons. And, and the Illuminati, which was created by Weishaupt, who is a Jesuit. Okay? See, Satan will have you go after all the parts of his body while ignoring the head, which is the Vatican. Okay? You got to remember that, brethren. You got to remember that. And while, yes, the Freemasons are a viable threat, 
who controls them? Arturo Sosa. Arturo Sosa controls the Freemasons, as Arturo Sosa controls the Vatican. Who's that? He's the Black Pope. He's the one to whom Francis answers to. Okay? Arturo Sosa, the most powerful, the deadliest man on earth. <laughs> y'all, y'all think, you know, be afraid of Putin. Be afraid of uh, those guys, those billionaire guys in Saudi Arabia. You know, all these world leaders. That one guy who is not the son of perdition, Macaroni, okay? Yeah, they're, they're nobody. They're nobody. Think about all the underground, like the mafia, the Yakuza, and all these mobs and stuff like that. They're nothing. They're nothing. The deadliest man on all of earth. The most powerful of all men is Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, the Black Pope. He is the most powerful, the deadliest man on all earth. The Black Pope can, can, can destroy a nation just like that if he wanted to. Well, the Lord has to, the Lord has to allow it. Um, the Lord has given the earth unto Satan for judgment. Okay? The Lord will get involved when it comes, for, uh, comes to um, his body being attacked. Okay? And even then, Satan needs permission to, to do that. Okay? But otherwise, Satan is the little jigot of this world whom the Masons worship. Okay? All right? And Satan's head, representative on earth, is Arturo Sosa. Okay? All right. Now let's continue. What I find most interesting is the constant push by society to accept these yet these to accept these yet movies such as those with the rock in them are so popular. Hmm. What does that say for us? It clearly says that elements in our society are demanding one thing, but people are rejecting it and demanding much better. And what does Satan say? What does Satan say about that, right? Huh? Well, let's look. What does Satan offer people? Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 5. On to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain shooed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. It's a whole new world, that stupid Disney song. Think about it. How, we've talked about this before. How does the devil show you the world in a moment of time? Flip the channel. Right? Flip the channel. Yeah. Take you to exotic places in this fictional reality called reality TV, and you get to see all the world in a moment of time, and all these celebrity superstars who are engaging in things that the devil tells you this is what it's about, this is what you need to be like, these are the standards that I give you. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and all the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, what does that say? I, can't, I can barely see that. It clearly says that elements in our society are demanding one thing, but people are rejecting it and demanding much better. Yeah, And Satan is going to be there after we, the Church of the Living God, get redeemed. Satan is going to be there to offer it to them. <clears throat> society has become tolerant of foul language, sexual depravity, attacks on the morality of all religions, drunkenness, drug use, 
political and financial corruption, to name a few. That is true. That is true. You, you got to remember the thing about rat poison, brethren. Rat poison is 95% good food. It's the 5% that'll kill you. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. What he's saying there is true. You know? Look, when you see these short videos with these little kids that, that the parents think it's cute that they're dropping F-bombs and stuff like that and drug use, and get, he's right. He's right. But see, what the Mason is offering is Satan. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Okay? Does that mean we should do the same in our daily interaction with others? How do you talk? How do you dress? How do you interact with your spouse, your children, your co-workers, your neighbor, your large brothers? And notice they put the capital B on that. Yeah. Again, how are we to respond as Masons to all this? And what's the lure? What's the lure that the Freemasons use? Okay? Freemasonry gave us the Constitution. Okay? That's a Masonic document. Okay? Our founding fathers, I'll, I'll speak to any of you of the Church of the Living God who want to dispute this. Our founding fathers were Freemasons. Okay? And Freemasonry, the wealthy, the elite, the esoteric and exoteric thing. Okay? The upper echelon. All right? Having pity on the poor, the mighty, the wise in this world, the noble. Okay? And God has chosen what? The foolish things. Foolish unto who? These Masons. We just read it. Masons are supposed to be above average. Well, you know what? God's a God of the average. Oh, Brad, shut up. Shut up. Why do you think it says in the scripture, not many mighty, not many wise in this world, you know why not many noble? Because they can get puffed up so much. You know, why do you think, why, I mean, praise the Lord, my wife and I live month to month. Because if we had a surplus, we could probably, whoa, hello, okay, could probably, you know, get puffed up in it. You know? Think of the people who have success. Okay? Many stumbling blocks. Many stumbling blocks. Okay? For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Okay? Those that will be rich fall into many temptations and snares. Okay? That's why God is a God of the little guy. Okay? That's why God is for those who are dependent on him, not self-sufficient. Okay? All right? Maybe that's why some are losing everything. Because there's always something. Maybe that's why certain things are going away from some of us. So that we learn to be more dependent on Christ rather than to be self-sufficient. Okay? And what this devil is telling you is complete opposite of that. While well, quoting a Bible <laughs> all the while, too. They're whores. Vatican whores. <laughs> Again, how are we to respond as Masons to this, to all this? I submit that we must strive daily to maintain the, those high levels of morality, honor, integrity, and the standards of our forefathers and ancient models. Oh boy, what ancient models. Oh, the ones of like uh, the tale of Horus. Hmm? 
the, of the uh, Scottish rites, huh? Yeah, their forefathers, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ugh. So the question I have for each of you as an individual is this. Are you the capital R rock in your family? No! Do you set the example of your children to follow? I don't have kids. Are you a rock in your community? No! <laughs> Do you volunteer to help and assist others or is that left to someone else? Why do you help others? To make yourself look good? Hmm? To, do you do help others so you can elevate a principle? Or because it is what the Lord has called you to? To remember that you were there once. You were one of them. Okay? Why do you do what you do? Well, because I got to. No. No. You got to remember that at one time, you were that. At one time, I was a lost man. At one time, I lived in ignorance. Willful ignorance, which is stupidity. Okay? It's, I've always said this. A paycheck keeps, uh, the, that's the only thing that separates me and my wife from that homeless man that is on the street. A paycheck. One paycheck. That's it. Okay? And then you have some snobby rich person condescending because, oh, you all here, I'm having pay. No, no. We do it because God is a God of the little guy. And we are not to forget from whence we came. We can't, we don't dwell, but we can't forget that we were pulled out of that. We must never forget that. And see, the problem is one too many have. Because they had all the world shown to them in a moment of time. The why you are doing is just as important, if not even more so, than the actual doing. And, and, and about this, are you the rock of your family? No, I'm not. I'm the head of this house. Because how it says in scripture, God, man, woman, child. Absolutely. But the capital R rock of your family? Um, well, what, what does Joshua have to say about that? Huh? What is Joshua? You know, you know, Joshua after the book of Deuteronomy? What does Joshua have to say? Uh, let me see. Uh, Joshua, chapter 24, verses 14 on to verse 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Other side of the flood. Before the flood, all that wicked, wicked stuff that was going on. And in Egypt, all the gods of Egypt, which Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, the harlot, okay? Roman Catholicism, the, ma the, the mother of all, even the mother of masonry, okay? The gods of Egypt... Okay? And like I said, you, you read some of Manly Palmer Hall, the Egyptian god kind of thing is all rife in Freemasonry. Okay? But, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in simplicity and truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
So who's the rock in my family, my wife and I, amongst my, our brethren, our sisters? Our sister, excuse me. Who? Sisters, excuse me. Uh, that be Lord Jesus Christ. That be Lord Jesus Christ. Are you the rock of your family? No. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you set the example for your children to follow? I don't have kids. But if I did, here. I live my I live my life according to the scriptures. This is where we get our instruction. This is how we live according to the scriptures. Okay? Are you a rock in your community? No. <laughs> in my my little town here, especially now that I got the facial hair back, I, people know who I am and they avoid me. I get yelled at. You better not be putting tracks on cars. <laughs> Thank you. Put it there. Take that off. I ain't going to do that. You want to make me? <laughs> I I've unfortunately have done that. It's like, I ain't, I ain't touching that. My hand never touched that car. Okay? You want to you take it off? Go ahead. I'm not taking it off. It's, it's there. You deal with it. Okay? But there are people out there in Woodstock here, when they see me like in the parking lots, they know. They know what I'm doing. They see me. Okay? The, there are people, yes. I'm not, And it, it's not a pop, nothing like that. But most of the times, you know, here in Woodstock, some people who are aware of what I, who I am, and that uh, me and my wife are witnesses unto the Lord Jesus Christ, they avoid us. Yeah, they yell at us. Okay? So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you, and the thing about, do you volunteer to help and assist others, or is that left to someone else? Are you there for your spouse when she needs your help? Are you there for your for children's schools and sports activities? Why are your children in school? Huh? And the sports activities among children, making little idols out of their children. We've talked about that in a video somewhere, and I can't remember where. Okay? <laughs> or is your golf or is your golf game? Your racing event, your college football on TV, more important than your spouse or your children. The distraction that Satan gives you through television. Are you a rock in your lodge? Do you even attend lodge? Or are you just a card-carrying member? <laughs> it's easy for all of us to become... Drifting sand. Following the fads and demands of a degenerate society. Now where would that lead us? We all know the answer. If you are not a rock, then what is stopping you? And then you got to go to the Masons, right? <laughs> wow. Wow. What, 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 what blasphemy? What, what, what egregious blasphemy there. How disgusting, how revolting. How revolting. Go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians, chapter 10. Verses 1, on the verse, oh, Verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 14. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. He's talking, Paul's talking about the children of Israel. Get that out of the way. About talking about the children of Israel. Okay? And we're all baptized unto Moses, identified, because you read nothing about water baptism. Whoa, the Red Sea and stuff like that. No, no. Uh, baptized there is in context, means as identified, okay? And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. 
and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual capital R rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. When God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, one of the seven uh, times that the capital W word appears in Scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. Okay? And in Revelation, what is that, 19, I believe that is? And his name is the capital W word of God seven times. Capital W word appears. Okay? But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these were, now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Physical fornication, yes, but remember, there are other forms of fornication, such as spiritual fornication, which so many people commit when they're watching the television. Okay? Yes, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of destroyer, of destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Quit your whining. Quit your whining. Quit your complaining. I have a right. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. You can take your complaints to the Lord as you ought to. But you gotta really be kind of careful with complaining. You gotta really be careful with whining. Okay, you really do. Okay, here, brother. There you go. Ow. All right. Now, all these things happen unto them for in samples with an N. I love how that, I love that spelling. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, you know, you got, I, you know, got to make sure you're above average. When God's a God of the little guy. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples. And they are written for our, for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. Lest he fall. There hath no temptation. Temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. People will take this verse and say, God won't put you through anything that he know you can't handle. That's a lie. We already read in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we don't trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. God will purposely put you through things that there ain't no way you yourself can handle. Example, doing this. I could never do this by my... You, uh, some have accused me. It's like, Brad, you're doing this all on you. <laughs> you crazy, boy. You crazy. No. I could never I I could never do this by myself. This is not of me. Okay? God will put you in things where you can't do it. Why? In order so that no man will glory in their flesh. Okay, we've already proved that. But see what the Mason, just like everything that is anti Christ. It's all, it's all about this. 
It's all about this. That's what it's about. It's all about flesh. Okay. And the Lord will purposely put you into situations, have things fall upon you, sometimes literally, that you can't control, that you can do nothing about, and you by yourself are powerless. It's temptation that he's talking about. It's temptation. That hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But with the temptation also, but with the temptation also make, but will, excuse me, with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, wherefore, my dearly beloved, Flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. Worshipping of a statue, worshipping of yourself, like the mason was just glorifying. Well, James, I believe that's uh, James chapter 4. Uh, I believe it's James chapter 4. Verses 7 on to verse 10. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Christianity, religion teaches you that you can do it yourself. It begins with what? Submitting yourself therefore to God. Unless you submit yourself to the Lord, how are you going to resist the devil? The devil and his angels, they just laugh at you. And they come in looking as ministers of righteousness, like that astute, esteemed Freemason. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. It begins with you submitting to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Yeah, you can't eat at the table of the Lord and at the table of devils. You can't have, there is no gray area. Okay? You can't have it both ways. You cannot serve God and mammon. Double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. See, that mason that we looked at, you know what he was doing? Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. See, some of the stuff that he said sounded so good, didn't it? Sure did. Some of the stuff, but see, he's a Freemason, probably somewhere in the 30s, at least, okay? He knows who he worships, son of the morning, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the accuser of the brethren, okay? But what is he offering? Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 12. And we'll be done. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Another gospel where you do it all. You do it all. It's like easy believism. Easy believism likes, wants you to say, you know, say things to you like, well, prayer is a work. Repentance is a work. Repentance is actually going from unbelief to belief. But see, when you strip the meat off that bone, they save themselves by their own belief. A work. They're saving themselves because they just believe. Okay? 
another gospel. Another gospel. All right? I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Freemasons. Who don't openly purport to be even Christian. But as we read in that article, right? Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. Hmm? And no marvel that his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Oh, like that Freemason? Ah. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. I said therefore, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. And what that Freemason was saying in that article was all man-pleasing. But I certify you, brethren, the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And, of course, you read in Ephesians chapter 3 that the gospel that is today was revealed unto Paul, and after the Jerusalem conference in Acts 15, everybody came out preaching what Paul was preaching, the gospel for today. Oh, brethren, so many people uh, parading themselves as the ministers of righteousness, offering to you another Jesus, another gospel. Freemasons. Be aware of these things, brethren. And, yeah, and brethren, you are, but you know, you got to watch out for this stuff, brethren, because it's just getting more and more and more. And of course, the Jesuits control Freemasonry. They run Freemasonry. And Freemasonry and all their symbols and all their rites and whatnot are rife. Especially in the entertainment. The means, the guise in which Satan flashes the world before you in a moment in time. The internet, cable TV, movies, Hollywood, pro wrestling, okay, video games, whatever it is. Whatever it is. That is going to be it for this video. There's going to be links in the description box for you to consider. Be aware of this, brethren. And remember, brethren, Church of the Living God, okay, do not get over-occupied with the scales that fall off from the body. But when you come in contact with a deadly poisonous serpent, what do you do? You go for the head. You don't waste the time on the scales. Okay? So that's going to be it for this video. Praise the Lord. This is what he wanted me to do today. So... <laughs> So it's always something, brethren. Please keep us in your prayers and please pray for one another. Please pray for one another. We need your prayers, brethren. The spiritual attacks that are coming here lately have been pretty brutal. Also pray for our brother Jeff from North Dakota. He has given me permission to do that. Um, oh, good Lord, when it rains it pours. But then again, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed bread gain bread. Pray for our brother from the Northeast um, who is dealing with a very tragic loss in his family. Pray for our dear sister who every day has to endure these worldly things at no fault of her own. 
Pray for our brethren in Europe who, um, who are doing as the Lord would have them to do, but yet are being persecuted for it. And pray for those, our brethren, who were once part of that system, that mystery Babylon, and has long gotten themselves out, but is surrounded by family who are neck deep in it. Pray for one another. And as you have means in, ever, in whatever way you have, help one another. Okay? It's going to be it for this video. We're going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Where's the cursor? There it is. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>